tucked away inside a lab in Ahmedabad are some of the rarest substances found on Earth. Rocks from the moon and from asteroids far away. This is the Physical Research Laboratory or PRL and here scientists study extraterrestrial materials from outer space. Not just that, the researchers here use cutting-edge technology for work involving archaeology, climate studies and much, much more. PRL is the research division of the Department of Space and specializes in earth and planetary sciences. Okay, so PRL as you know is a close to 75 years old institute established by Dr. Sarabhai who is the father of Indian Space Program. And uh, this institute has a great legacy because Indian Space Research Organization was founded in PRL and what we know about ISRO and Department of Space is all the activities started in this very lab. Here at the NanoSims lab are rock samples from outer space. These are moon samples from NASA's Apollo missions and Russia's Luna missions. There are also asteroid samples from Ryugu and Itokawa provided by Japanese Hayabusa missions. They also have several meteorites here collected from various parts of the world and India. The lab now is preparing for India's next big mission. So the main uh Projects that we run here are related to metroids yeah. and sample returns. Mm -hmm. We are very, uh, like, ISRO is planning for sample return from moon now. Mm -hmm. So that's why sample return becomes very important. So we yeah. have a legacy of working with metroids and sample return uh, samples. Yeah. The team also studies pre-solar grains that formed before the sun did and do work on studying elements and isotopes that existed through the formation and evolution of our solar system as well as other stars in the Milky Way galaxy. The instruments here are some of the most precise in the world to operate at nanoscales and study elements and isotopes and the teams here have collaborated with researchers globally from other space agencies across the world. Next door at the Xterra lab, samples from Earth are studied. Precise and cutting-edge spectrometers help study these samples and provide details of their elemental and isotopic composition, enabling scientists to understand how they formed and evolved on our planet. Uh, precision we get from this instrument is up to like 0.01% up to 0.0001%, up to like 10 ppm. We can get the, uh, the precision from this instrument. It's one and of the most precise instruments most precise in the world. Instru instrument in the world. Okay. And that's why for planetary materials or geological samples, where you have the variations in the PPM range, this this is really like a very useful tool. Understanding geological objects requires going back to the smallest of scales we study in, requiring precise and expensive instruments. Students and researchers travel the world, obtaining samples and observing processes, as well as working with researchers in other parts of the world. In the Thaltej campus in Ahmedabad, home to a number of urban wildlife species including majestic peacocks, sits PRL's 1 MeV accelerator mass spectrometer. This huge device occupies the size of a basketball court and is a highly sensitive instrument that can detect long-lived radioisotopes. This is also used to date geological material. A groundbreaking finding in PRL in 2018 came from the Luminescence Lab. For decades, anthropologists have believed that humans migrated out of Africa in multiple waves and settled all over the world. But the team here discovered that there had been hominins or cousins of ancient Homo sapiens in India 385,000 years ago. The findings came from the archaeological site of Attirampakkam, north of Chennai. The stone tools from here were dated in the dark luminescence lab by analyzing sparks of light that come from electrons that were trapped inside these rocks thousands of years ago. The technology allows the team to date grains of sand and quartz to the last time they were exposed to intense amount of energy, like sunlight or heat, tracking timelines like that of glacial sediment deposition and retreat, or paleo-earthquakes, powerful enough to generate energy to rub the grains against each other. The oldest samples they've dated go all the way back to 400,000 years, while the youngest is 6 years.
Basically, we have a sophisticated systems here, hmm. which are like we we can estimate the age of even the single grains of the sand. Single grains means hundred micron grain to two hundred micron grain, yeah. which no other systems can estimate. Hmm. And this is the oldest and the best equipped lab of India. The neighboring lab too started off with a focus on archaeology and the Indus Valley civilization. At the radiocarbon dating lab, the team works with all other labs on climate sciences as well. There is a major focus on groundwater in India and its interaction with its environment. Its recharge and vulnerable zones are also identified all over the country. The lab also works on understanding paleoclimate as well as the carbon dynamics in high altitude Himalayan soil to identify pathways of carbon loss. This is a very new project and Probably we are the only expert available, not only in India, in the world, who can handle the gaseous samples collected from different soil depths. Okay. The team recreates past environmental conditions or paleoclimate through data, calculating conditions that existed in the oceans thousands of years ago, monsoon patterns from millions of years ago, and all the environmental nitty-gritty associated with climatic conditions. And they do this work with all kinds of fossils and archaeological artifacts. The technology for dating and studying paleo samples has grown tremendously over the last decades, becoming more cutting edge than ever. Along with the radiocarbon lab here is the Stable Isotopes Lab, which uses rare and newer isotope measurements for climate studies. So in PRL and particularly in this lab, we work for this biogeochemical processes. So many places you do research of this kind going on, but where do we kind of a, a little bit different is that we try to measure the rates of these processes, like how this nitrogen and carbon move from one pool to another pool. And for that, we use isotopes. The teams at the Stable Isotope Lab study elements like carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen that are associated with life and environmental processes. They study the ocean, the soil, the desert, water bodies, atmosphere, ice core samples, plant matter and much much more to understand how these elements move around in nature. The findings from here help us understand what happens to the future of the country in the face of rapid atmospheric and oceanic heating. The study of natural processes related to climate in India and abroad enables PRL to also provide vulnerability assessment and policy inputs to the government. We have activities going around in the area of uh Astronomy, astrophysics, uh, solar physics, space atmospheric science, planetary science, geoscience, theoretical physics, atomic molecular physics, and the like. We have people working in here in the area of uh, astrochemistry and astrobiology. We have people working on quantum communication. We have scientists here working in various processes of dating. We have people who work on various space bound instrumentation development like talking about the Chandyan 1 mission, Chandyan 2 mission, more recently the Chandyan 3 which had a very soft landing on the lunar surface and we have done excellent science from those lander and the rover on the Chandyan 3. So there is a wide variety of research which is carrying out in PRL, but we focus mostly on the fundamental sciences and work in the niche area of science. The young researchers in PRL work right in the heart of one of the cradles of Indian science, going easily today from a space lab to an archaeology lab to a climate lab within a matter of minutes. This is a unique experience, rarely possible elsewhere in the world, let alone the country.